Hello, everybody. My name is Eli Poffer, and today I'm going to be discussing the dilemma forced upon people who are part of the adopted culture. This choice is one of either joining the greater society or preserving their own culture. First off, here is a lesson in apparent unfairness. So, Hebrew and Phoenician are two of the oldest, uh, earliest recorded languages, both discovered as far back as the 10th century BCE. However, Hebrew has over 5 million native speakers today, and no one's spoken Phoenician in over 1,500 years. Logically, there is no reason why this should happen. There are, uh, there are similar languages that have similar uh, bases at one point, so why is there... So really, there isn't any reason, um, there isn't any reason why these should, two shouldn't follow a similar path. However, as you will soon see, very often unforeseen fairness is nothing but the work of unforeseen independent factors. Okay, so I'm going to be throwing these words around a lot, so I think it'll be better to explain what they mean. So, Integration is basically um, you can become a part of society without losing anything that makes you individual. Assimilation is joining a society to the point where you are unrecognizable from the rest of society. So these two essentially is becoming a member of society and becoming a part of society. As opposed to isolation, which is um, just the exact opposite of the end of the spectrum. It's just avoiding society at all costs and just trying to just remain separate from the rest of the world. Okay, so now we essentially have two main choices. It's either joint society or remain isolated. However, joint society is not a bad option, and remain isolated is not an option. All right, let me explain. So it's my belief that uh, longevity and sustainability of livelihood should precede the unnatural preservation of a dying culture. So. First of all, why is isolation unsustainable? So, basically, uh, uh, basically, uh, when you think of societal isolation, you're generally thinking of people living off the land. However, we don't have enough land for that, and we're going to be we're running out very quickly. We are, uh, or uh, the amount of natural resources that are being harvested are uh, around the world are outpacing the rate at which they're being replenished by over thirty percent, and Unfortunately, by 2050, we, we simply won't have enough land for all of these, uh, for this nomadic lifestyle to be viable within just a few generations. So, the only alternative is to integrate to society. However, this choice is often clouded and hindered by many misconceptions that are, and the largest and most substantial of these is that cultural immigrants should not become a member of free, of free society because it's harder for them to get jobs when compared to the native population. Now, <coughs> This is true? Well, yes. However, this idea completely ignores why, as there are several external factors that dictate these numbers, and sadly, they are not discussed when this topic arises. And so this table has, um, is based on a survey that was run throughout several European countries in 2014 by people by ethnic groups and uh, analyzing their place in the, work, in, in the workforce. Now, there are a lot of different statistics here, while all of it is interesting, we're going to be focusing specifically on these eight. So what's in red is specifically workforce statistics, as opposed to what is in blue, which is more explaining why. So labor force participation, as you can see at the top two, essentially what percentage of people either have jobs or are searching for them. This means that uh, people such as retirees or people with the, who are on disability <coughs> are uh, not counted. The difference between uh, natives and immigrants uh, for men is within half a percent, 83 percent, 82 point six percent. However, the difference among women is far more substantial. It's 71 percent of women working, as opposed to only 53.4 percent of ethnic immigrants. As well, unemployment rates is over double that of natives, with um, with uh, an average of 15.4 percent, as opposed to natives 7.5. However, this isn't just random or spread. Um, the level of education among immigrants is almost 20% lower, and their level of proficiency is 22% lower. However, for these last two, I want to draw specific attention to. And more importantly, I want to draw attention to the specific importance of relationships. Out of these polls, ethnic natives were generally very comfortable with the amount of friends that they had and acquaintances they made, if that's in the workplace or just in their neighborhood. Ethnic immigrants, however, as you can see in the last four columns, um, are telling a very different story. They don't feel like they have many friends in, of native ethnicities, and they tend to live in very society, socially segregated areas. Now, to pull on this information, it'll be very important later on. Okay, so another 
claim that is just, this one's very bold, is just that by being part of society which practices a different religion than you, you are somehow unable to practice uh, your own religion. This is false in the vast majority of cases, and this is, yeah, this is false in the vast majority of cases. For the most part, people will never be forced to adapt to a new religion because of the country they live in, not because it is their age. This, uh, the most common thing is that people will just be pressured into these sorts of situations and will end up uh, conforming or uh, assimilating just out of stress. Okay. Now, for well, armed with this information, what do we do with it? So, there's a lot of pressure for these native cultures to conform and to assimilate. And this should be avoided for sure. People don't, people should not have to um, give up their religion just to feel like they belong. Uh, there has to be more of a push in the world for religious inclusion. This might include allowing certain practices or holidays, like black people to take time off of work for religion, but no matter what, this should be a major focus. However, I don't feel comfortable just say, oh, it's fine, the government will handle it, we'll just say that and let it happen. I, we all have a part to play as well. Now, do you remember when I was talking about uh, the importance of relationships? This is where all of us come in. It's us up. It's up to us to make these relationships and uh, form healthy connections that allow people to feel like they belong without being forced to arbitrarily change what may be an important part of their identity. Without stability, preservation cannot come, and reconstruction will never arrive. Remember, your choices in the present do not shape the future. They are the future. Thank you. Eli, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? Um, at first, my research question simply had, had, was a bit more broad. It had to do a lot more with language and a lot less with culture. It was about uh, the limitations of only speaking a single language that is not like the commonly spoken language. And then it began to shift to culture because I felt that, that had more depth to it and could be analyzed in more detail. And what additional questions emerged from your research? Um, well, I mean, something that I found was just what's being done to help this. Like, uh, in Vanishing Voices, they talk about how, um, like, some people are already, like, have, like, teaching their children in more common languages, which I think is in the right direction. I found in some parts of the world there are, um, are like, schools that are working to have more languages, like, a, a more broad language curriculum. So I began to sort of just question, like, part of the world, what's being done, how much has this solution already been put into 